we're at lesson 2b and we're going to be multiplying and dividing whole numbers. We use multiplication when we need to add several equal amounts. So if we wanted to add 3 two times, we would do 2 times 3. And these are the factors and that's the product. These are the factors of 6. They're also called multiplicands, but I don't want you to worry about that. I want you to think of them as factors, okay? That's going to help you more. And we can multiply numbers that have many digits by regrouping, just as we did with addition. We start at the ones place and multiply each digit. We regroup. It used to be called carryover back in the day. We do this when we have to. So we do 5 times 5. Well, that's 25. So because we can't write a 25 here, we regroup the 2 and put the 5 down. Now we go here. 5 times 3 is 15, and we remember to add the 2. So we have 15, 16, 17. We carry that 1 and put the 7 down. Now we do 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 1 more is 11. So we have 1,175. Okay? So just remember, it's like a fan. You're starting in the ones place and slowly fanning out to the larger place values. Okay? So let's try this. When multiplying by a two-digit number, we fan across just like we did with the ones place. So we did the ones place. We did 5 times 5 is 25. We carried the 2 and put the 5 down. 5 times 3 is 15, 16, 17. We put that 1 up here and put the 7 down here for the 17. Then we did 5 times 2 is 10, and 1 more is 11. So we started with the ones place, and we multiplied fanning across, right? Well, now we need to do that 1, because this is 235 times 15. So we've got this 110 here. So now that we're done doing the 5, it's the 1's turn, and he gets fanned to the 1's place, the 10's place, the 100's place. And because we're multiplying by 10, we start writing our answer in the tens place. See? When we multiplied the ones, we started writing our answer in the ones place. Now that we're multiplying in the tens place, our answer starts in the tens place. So see how it's an empty space here? 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 2 is 2. We draw our line, put a plus sign. We add these together. 5 and nothing is 5. 5 and 7 is 12. We regrouped, put a 1 up here, didn't we? Put the 2 down there. We have 3, 4, 5, and then we have 2, 3. We have 3,525. All right? Now, what happens when we do three digits? Well, we did this, and we started writing our answer in the tens place because we were multiplying the tens place. Same thing. Because we're multiplying in the hundreds, we start writing our answer in the hundreds place. See? And... When we did the ones, we fanned out. When we did the tens place, we fanned out. And now that we're multiplying the hundreds place to the 235, we fan out. Starting with the ones, 6 times 5 is 30. The 3 goes up here, and the 0 goes in the hundreds place, because that's what we're multiplying, the hundreds. 6 times 3 is 18, plus that 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. For the 21, the 2 goes up here, and the 1 goes down here. Then we do 6 times 2, which is 12, 13, 14. We put the 14 here. We draw our line, put our plus sign, and now we add all the columns directly. Nice and pretty columns. 5 and nothing is 5. 7 and 5 is 12. We regroup the 1, put the 2 down. Now we've got 3, 4, 5, plus 0 is 5. Then we've got 1 plus 2 plus 1, that's a 4, and we drop this 1 and this 4 down, we put in our comma. We have 144,525. So just remember, when you're multiplying these, you start with the ones place and fan to each digit, ones, tens, hundreds. Then you move to the tens place, and that's where the answer is going to start being written in the tens place. And you fan one, tens, hundreds in order. When you do the third digit for the hundreds place, that's where the answer starts because you're multiplying hundreds. So these are left blank. And you do ones, tens, hundreds. Just ones, tens, hundreds, ones, tens, hundreds, okay? All right. 
We use division when we need to separate a whole thing into equal parts. You have a candy bar and you have two friends. You want to split it into three equal parts, right? You want to be fair? So here we have 6 divided by 3 equals 2. This 6 is the dividend and that 3 is the divisor. All right, so the big number is the dividend. The number it's being divided by is the divisor. And the answer is the quotient. And division is the inverse operation for multiplication. That means it's the opposite. So if you look, we have 2 times 3 equals 6. And I can go 6 times 3, 6 divided by 3 equals 2. See, I can flip it around. They're just in the other order. We went this way, 2 times 3 equals 6. And now we're going this way, 6 divided by 3 equals 2. We're just flipping the signs, see? So remember, to undo multiplication, you can use division. And to undo division, you can use multiplication. And you can use them to check the answers. You can check a division problem's quotient by doing multiplication. And you can check multiplication by doing division. It's just like addition and subtraction are opposites. They're inverse operations. All right. So here we've got our dividend inside of our bracket here. And actually, I bet you didn't know this, this is two different signs. This is two different signs. It's actually part of a parentheses and a fraction bar. But they're just so close together, you don't see it because division problem, fractions are little division problems and division problems are actually fractions. If I went like this, you could see. See that? Two sixths. So they're actually little division problems. So this is actually two signs put together to look like a long division sign. Isn't that cool? So the dividend, the big number, goes inside. The number it's being divided by is on the outside. So see how for this one, this was first, and now it's on the inside. So you have to remember that, okay? So if we want to divide 248 by 8, we ask ourselves, can the 8 fit into the 2? Nope. Can it fit into the 24? Yes, three times. And then we do the multiplication. 3 times 8 is 24, and we subtract it. 24 minus 24 is 0, and now it's the 8's turn to come down. How many times can 8 fit into 8? 1. And 8 times 1 is 8. We do the subtraction, we get 0, there's no remainder. Our answer is 31. So 8 can fit into a 248 31 times. All right? And we can do this quotient times the divisor, 31 times 8, and if it equals the dividend, 248, then we know we did it right. See? Okay. Now, sometimes you need to do a little multiplication on the side. And I have a very, very, very good video linked in this description, and it's going to be up near the top. I want you to watch that one. This one is not an elective. I really, really, really want you to watch this video if you are having trouble with long division. And it's called long division by one, two, three digit divisor. And you'll see it when you click on the description, the little triangle, you'll see all the links for the videos that I've got to, you know, for extra help. You have to watch this one because what I do is I go through one digit being used as a divisor, two digits, three digits, and I slowly use the same numbers and you can see the problem grow and it'll make sense, okay? For this one, we have 5,210, and we need to see how many times 17 can fit into it. So 17 can't fit into 5, so we move over. Can 17 fit into 52? Well, I know 17 times 3 is 51, and I did that little math on the side, so I know that. So 17 times 3 is 51. We put the 3 up above the 2 because that's what the 17 is going into. It's not going in the 5. It's going in the 52. We do our subtraction, we get a 1, and now it's this 1's turn to come down. So now we have an 11. See that? Right here. I'm trying to block this. We have this 11 right here. 17 can't fit into 11. It goes in 0 times. 
So we put a zero up here and 17 times zero is zero. We do our subtraction, we get 11 again and now it's this zero's turn to come down, see? Can 17 fit into 110 and how many times? Well, I know that 17 times six is 102. So we put a six up here, we do the multiplication as 102, we subtract, we get eight left over, so we have a remainder of eight, all right? And it can be written as a fraction, so you need to watch that video, okay? It's called Long Division by One, Two, Three Digit Divisor, and it's in this description, all right? Again, for this one, we have three digits. 213 cannot fit into one or 12 or 121, so now we've got to try to put it into 1,214. And doing a little math on the side, I saw that 213 times 5 is 1,065. If I multiplied it by 6, it was 1,278, and that was too big. See? So it's not a 6, it's a 5. We put the 5 up above the 4 because it's going into 1,214. We do our subtraction, get 149. It's the 1's turn to come down. We ask how many times 213 can fit into 1,491. And we see that it is exactly a 7. 213 times 7 is that number. So we put the 7 above the 1 that we dropped down. We multiply the 213 times the 7 and get the 1,491. We do our subtraction, get a 0. And now it's this zero's turn to come down. How many times can 213 fit into zero? None. So we just put a zero up there. 213 times zero is zero, and we get a zero. So there's no remainder. See? Now, when you're doing division on a calculator, because they're probably going to let you do this part on the calculator, and if you can do this quickly, you will save time, because obviously doing this long division is a lot harder than using a calculator. Okay, you need to save precious seconds and minutes. If you've only got 90 minutes to finish this test, you don't want to spend five minutes doing one problem. Okay, you want to finish them as quickly as possible, but you want to give them the right answer. You don't want to do it fast and wrong. Okay, so when you're doing division on a calculator and you've got this problem, we know that this is 23 fits into 589 how many times? This is the divisor, this is the divisor, this is the dividend, okay? So the big number is the dividend, and that's the number you're going to put in the calculator first. Very first thing you're going to do is push a C or an AC to clear out the memory from the previous problem. Then you put in the 589 and hit the division key. Then you put in the divisor, the smaller number out here, the 23, and you hit equal, and it will give you that quotient, okay? That is a lot quicker than going through all of this, okay? And if it saves you some time, hey, if it saves you 45 seconds, that's 45 seconds you've got to work on a harder problem, okay? Every second counts, all right? I don't want you to feel pressured, but just know in your heart, if you take too long doing something that you didn't need to, it's going to hurt you for something else, okay? My other advice is to get a times table game or multiplication facts game app. There's one called space multiplication. There's one called times table multiplication with an exclamation point. Just if you find a good multiplication tables or multiplication facts app, write it in the comments for this video to let people know, hey, I found one and you can play it in your downtime. When you don't have anything to do and you're standing around and you're on the bus or whatever, you're at lunch, you could play the times table game. And what that's going to do is it's going to help you go faster when you take this test. All right? You don't want to have to worry, oh, what's six times seven? I forgot. Get an app. Start practicing. Okay? That way you'll save yourself some precious minutes. All right? So now you should be ready to do the GED skill focus on page 45 and just remember that on a calculator we enter the digits in the same order as in the equation and that sometimes mental math is faster than a calculator so if we saw a division problem not written long division like this but if we saw it written like this this is exactly how we would put it in we would put in the six then the division sign then the three then the equals and we'd get our quotient alright it's just when it's in a long division 
form that you want to make sure you put the inside number in first, okay? You put this in first, then you hit the division button, then you put in 23 and then equal, okay? If any of this is way too confusing for you, if we're starting to get way ahead, I want you to take a step back and I want you to watch my grade level playlist. We are now getting into fifth and sixth grade math. So you're going to have to watch this grade two, grade three, grade four playlist. You can even get the Go Math books online that match these, okay? So if you read the, in, the information at the, in the playlist, in the description of the playlist, it'll tell you about this, okay? I don't want you to get ahead of yourself and start feeling frustrated and then quit, okay? If this is getting too hard, take a step back. Have some grit. Say, I'm going to get over this. I'm going to fix this. I'm not going to quit. All right. So our next video is step-by-step -step problem solving. It's 2C. And there's going to be links for these videos in the description. There's going to be these grade five math videos that talk about multiplication in two and three digits and division with two and three digit divisors. But this is the biggie. If you understand the multiplication and you're just stuck with the long division, watch this video. Watch it twice, whatever. But this one's going to help you, okay? And it'll just one click away, all right? And don't worry about when it says grade 5 or grade 3 or whatever, because right now, I'm making this video at the end of 2017, and kids are now doing math anywhere from two to four years ahead of the kids that did it 10, 20 years ago. They're doing algebra in third grade, okay? They're starting to use variables in third grade. So they're trying to push math because our country is so far behind. So don't worry about what it says for grade level because when you were in school, it was a different grade level, okay? This is just what it looks like now. So don't worry about it. It's just a number. If that's the video that's going to help you, watch it, okay? All right, I'll see you in next video, and we'll talk about step-by-step -step problem solving. Bye.